The streets were talking, people were begging and pleading for it, so you know I had to come through. With the regular season over and the declaration deadline passed, here it is, the two-minute drill mock draft. If you like the content this channel puts out, please consider subscribing to our Patreon to show support and potentially get additional content. We have different tiers that give you the chance to have influence on what we put out on this channel, and we hope to get your support. Thanks. First, let me get it out of the way that no mock draft is good without context, so let's get some moving pieces out of the way with the skill position group. We're starting out with Tom Brady. I have him going to the Las Vegas Raiders, Jimmy Garoppolo going to the New Orleans Saints, Jacoby Brissett going to the Atlanta Falcons to compete with Desmond Ritter for the job, Jameis Winston heading back to Tampa Bay, Baker Mayfield going to Arizona to fill in for Kyler Murray while he recovers, Kareem Hunt at the running back position going to the Los Angeles Rams, and then Alan Lazard going to the Baltimore Ravens. Then we move to the trenches, where I think Rob Gronkowski comes back yet again and joins Brady in Vegas. A Waller-Gronkowski duo with Adams and Renfro on the outside is deadly. I have Mike Gesicki leaving Miami for the Detroit Lions. Mike McGlinchey leaving the 49ers, going to the Bears, but the 49ers will replace him with Taylor Lewan, who I project the Titans will cut in order to save cap space, but they still need a left tackle, but they need someone that's going to be healthy, so they go and sign Orlando Brown Jr., George Fant, goes to the Buffalo Bills, a nice fit where you can hopefully have Spencer Brown start, but if he can't, Fant is a very good right tackle. And then Dalton Risner comes into the Las Vegas Raiders. They are all in on protecting Brady, and you have to be get him at the other guard spot across from Parham, and you have a decent offensive line going on. Now we shift over to the defense. Marcus Davenport and Greg Gaines leave their respective teams and head to the Detroit Lions. Bud Dupree off the edge, another guy that I expect to get cut by the Titans. I think he goes to the Chiefs, tries to ring chase a little bit, and then David Onyemeta, a defensive tackle, signs with the Seattle Seahawks. At the linebacker spot, I think Eric Kendricks gets cut, and I think the Patriots will swoop in. They need some linebacker help. Getting a veteran like him would be crucial for the defense. And then we move to the secondary. Shaq Griffin is another guy I project to get cut, and I think the Texans swoop in and try to sign him. You see if you can make that magic happen again while you're in the rebuild. And if you do, then you have Stingley and Griffin working on opposite ends, and that's going to be a very good duo. James Bradbury, I think, hits the market. I don't think the Eagles can afford to bring him back, but the Bengals have a lot of money to spend. I think they put a little money into Bradbury and really try to make it a full run with a very good team. And then Jesse Bates is the last free agent remaining that we'll discuss. I think the Falcons come in and swoop him. They have not been able to find a free safety for the long term. Jesse Bates, an absolute star, can't get the negotiations figured out with the Bengals. I think the Falcons would be more than happy to pay him the price that he's well worth. And then we have some trades going on. Sean Payton is traded to the Denver Broncos, who will pay their number 30 pick and a future conditional. I think the Jets are the team to land Derek Carr. I think they pay a conditional pick for next year that could be anywhere from a second to fourth rounder, depending on how Carr plays. And then the Cardinals trade DeAndre Hopkins to the Browns. little reunion with Deshaun Watson. Picks 43 and 111 going back to Arizona. And then the final wide receiver that we're going to talk about as a player trade in this draft is Michael Thomas being sent to the New York Giants for pick 158 and then a conditional pick in 24, depending on how he plays. However, we do have one last trade that we need to address before we start this mock, and that is because the Bears have traded the first pick of the draft and pick 130 to the Indianapolis Colts for pick number four, pick number 80, a 2024 first, and a 2024 fourth round pick. Maybe there's a little bit of extra change in here somewhere, but this is the parameters I think will be most important to the trade. I think it makes perfect sense for both sides. All right, thank you for your patience. I'm sorry for the delay, but now let's get started. With the first pick of the NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts come out and select Bryce Young. We know that if they were to trade up, it would be for a quarterback, whether that's Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Will Levis, or maybe even Anthony Richardson. It's going to be a quarterback if they move to number one. And for me right now, Bryce Young is my quarterback one. I expect him to be the number one pick in April, but I will say I could very easily see the number one pick being Will Levis. Not that he's necessarily my quarterback two or anything, but the NFL seems to really like him. Which is why at number two, I have the Houston Texans selecting Will Levis to be their franchise centerpiece for the future. At number three, I have the Arizona Cardinals grabbing Will Anderson Jr. They need some edge rushing help, and Will Anderson is the best defensive player in this class, in my opinion. Absolute stud and a perfect pick. At number four, I have the Chicago Bears, who traded with the Colts, picking Jalen Carter, defensive lineman out of Georgia. 
They get the number two defensive player on my board, and I think he has tremendous upside and could potentially be a great fit in that Eberfuss defense. With the fifth pick, I have the Seattle Seahawks taking Tyree Wilson, the edge rusher out of Texas Tech, who's been a little bit of a riser in this draft process already, but I truly think he could get up into the top five. He has that nice blend of defensive line and defensive end ability. At number six, I have the Lions taking Cam Smith. They run a high amount of man coverage, and they need some help opposite of Okuda. And I think Cam Smith is the top dog in this class at the cornerback position at this point. He has that alpha mentality, and he locks down receivers. At number seven, with quarterback figured out, with offensive line added to, and Rob Gronkowski in on the offense, they look to the defense with this draft, and Brian Brzee is the perfect pick to fit in on their defensive line, play defensive tackle, and help shore up the run defense. And to pick number eight, the Atlanta Falcons are on the clock, and they need some additional edge rush help. They improved the unit a little bit from last year, but they could use some more guys, and they're going to get Miles Murphy out of Clemson, a very nice, powerful defensive end who I think is a great fit to help bolster that unit. Moving on to number nine with the Carolina Panthers, and they take C.J. Stroud, quarterback out of Ohio State. I know some people think Stroud's going to go a lot higher. We've seen guys like Deshaun Watts and Justin Fields turning great playoff performances, and then they still fall back in this range. I think C.J. Stroud is going to be a very good quarterback in the NFL, but I do think he can fall a little bit more than expected on draft day. With the 10th pick, the Philadelphia Eagles are up after the Olave trade last year with the Saints, and I have them going Joey Porter Jr., cornerback out of Penn State. I think Bradbury hits the market like I talked about earlier, and while Darius Slay is very good, they need a cornerback opposite of him. Joey Porter, very long, very aggressive, has great ball skills. I think he would be a nice addition and some needed youth to the secondary. At number 11, the Tennessee Titans are on the clock, and I think they go with wide receiver Quentin Johnston out of TCU. You added Traylon Burks last offseason, and I think that's a great pick, but the wide receiver room was still lacking overall. Getting a guy like Johnston is a great addition to the offense and helps open up the passing game to help out Henry and Tannehill alike. And at pick number 12, I have the Houston Texans coming in and selecting Jordan Addison, wide receiver out of USC. I didn't have a projected trade for Brandon Cooks, but I do think he gets moved. With a new quarterback in town, I think you're okay with John Mechie. I think you're okay with Nico Collins, but you add one more wide receiver and Jordan Addison is a very nice addition to that mix. At number 13, I have the Jets taking Peter Skaronsky. Look, the debate is going to last all offseason, whether he's a tackle, whether he's a guard, maybe he's a center even. But I think you can pick him. If he doesn't work out at tackle, you can move Vera Tucker back out to left tackle where he's had success before, put Skaronsky in at guard. It's going to work out for this offensive line. Skaronsky is a very talented blocker, a very good run blocker, so perfect for the offense, and I think that works out well to where they can make this pick and feel pretty safe about it. At pick number 14, the New England Patriots select Paris Johnson Jr., offensive tackle out of Ohio State. Their offense is moving more towards a zone-blocking scheme, so they need some young guys that are going to be the long-term answer at the positions. Paris Johnson Jr., long, athletic, definitely needs some further development, but I think in the right landing spot, he could be a long-term starter at either left or right tackle. And we have our next trade with number 15. I think the Green Bay Packers get out of here and go back further into the first round while the Giants trade up. Yes, I know Daniel Jones just had a great playoff performance. I know that there's debate about whether or not he's the quarterback of the future. I think you got to take the risk. You got guys like Dable and Kafka who have experience working with toolsy quarterbacks. Bring in Anthony Richardson, quarterback out of Florida, and landing in New York, it truly would not shock me if Richardson ended up as the best quarterback in this class. And with the 16th pick, I have the Washington Commander selecting Keely Ringo, cornerback out of Georgia, to help add to that secondary that desperately needs some additional talent after William Jackson didn't really work out. And at pick number 17, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Broderick Jones, offensive tackle out of Georgia. If you're the Steelers, priority number one needs to be protecting Kenny Pickett. And while the offensive line did improve a little bit over the course of the season, it is still well below average. Getting Jones here at one of the tackle spots is a huge step in the right direction. And with pick number 18, the Detroit Lions are on the clock again with their original pick, and I have them taking Trenton Simpson, linebacker out of Clemson. The offense is good, but the defense needs an overhaul. They already got Cam Smith earlier, Marcus Davenport, and Greg Gaines in free agency. Add to the linebacker room, get Trenton Simpson, and your defense is going to look light years better. At number 19, I have the Bucks going a little bit with a BPA approach and picking BJ Ojolari, edge rusher out of LSU. Look, with this situation, you kind of just have to figure out what your future looks like if you're Tampa Bay. Shaq Barrett coming off of an Achilles injury. Joe Tryon didn't necessarily take the step that you were looking for, and the depth at the room was not good. Getting B.J. Ojolari gives you a long-term answer at the position, whether that's him as a starter or just rotating in with three different guys. 
And at pick number 20, the Seahawks are back on the board with their original pick, and I have them taking Drew Sanders, linebacker out of Arkansas. Whether you want him on the edge, playing off ball in the mic, will, or any linebacker role, really, he is going to find a way to succeed. Great frame, great athleticism, and pairs extremely well with Jordan Brooks. I messed up here on the graphics. It should be Dolphins next, but they're forfeiting the selection anyway. So at pick number 21, the Los Angeles Chargers select Jackson Smith and Jigba, wide receiver out of Ohio State. Look, for the Chargers, you need to revamp this offense after the struggles that it had last season. Keenan Allen missed a lot of time with a hamstring injury. He is getting older. You need some young weapons. I think Jackson Smith and Jigba adds to this room, helps open up the offense, and adds to the passing attack overall. At pick number 22, I have the Baltimore Ravens taking Christian Gonzalez, cornerback out of Oregon. Whether Marcus Peters is back or not, I think the Ravens need to add to that secondary, get a little bit younger at the room, and Gonzalez is a very top-end talent at the cornerback position. This cornerback class overall is very jumbled. You know, guys could go anywhere in this order. Joey Porter could be the top cornerback off the board. He could be a later guy. Christian Gonzalez is just another guy that maybe could be the first cornerback off the board if the offseason plays in his favor. And we have another trade. The Atlanta Falcons contact the Minnesota Vikings and they move up to number 23. And I have them taking Bijan Robinson running back out of Texas. Now look, I know Tyler Algier had a very good rookie season, but I think Arthur Smith knows just how valuable a workhorse running back like Bijan Robinson can be. Algier can still easily contribute to that backfield, but Bijan takes the majority workload and I think that offense takes the next step. At pick 24, the Jacksonville Jaguars are on the clock, and like I mentioned earlier with the cornerback room, it is completely jumbled right now, and anyone could go anywhere. I have Devin Witherspoon here, but there's been talk about him being the first cornerback taken as well. I think right now Tyson Campbell took a major step forward, but they need another talent in that secondary. Put Witherspoon on the other side, and you got a very good cornerback duo for the future. At number 25, after trading back, the Green Bay Packers are on the clock, and I have them taking Brian Branch. Adrian Amos just hasn't looked the same in a while, and getting Branch here is a very nice, youthful addition to the secondary. At pick number 26, the Cowboys are on the clock, and I have them taking Osiris Torrance. Assuming Tyler Smith is the left tackle of the future, you get Torrance added to that offensive line. Young unit on the left side, but I think it's a very good duo. At pick number 27, the Buffalo Bills are on the clock, and I have them taking Antonio Johnson, safety out of Texas A&M. Last year, they did a ton of homework on the safety position, but didn't end up picking anyone. Johnson, I think, is the safety number one in this class. An absolute stud, free safety, strong safety, nickelback, whatever you need to use him as, he is going to succeed. I think for the Bills, it's a perfect addition to a room that is getting a little bit older. At pick number 28, I have the Kansas State Chiefs selecting Anton Harrison. After Orlando Brown Jr. hit the open market, they have a hole at the left tackle position. Anton Harrison fills it rather well, and I think he's even a little bit better of a scheme fit for the passing attack that they have. At pick number 29, the Philadelphia Eagles are back on the clock with their original pick, and I have them taking Nolan Smith, edge rusher out of Georgia. I think right now with Brandon Graham getting older, with Robert Quinn likely hitting free agency, you need to add more depth talent to that edge rushing room, and the Philadelphia Eagles love to invest in the trenches. Getting Nolan Smith, I think, is a perfect addition and a future starter for this team. And following the Sean Payton trade, the New Orleans Saints are on the clock here, and I have them going Michael Mayer, tight end out of Notre Dame. BPA approach maybe a little bit, but I think pairing him with Olave in the passing game is a great addition to this offense. Right now, you're kind of rebuilding with a little bit of gloominess in terms of cap situation, so you're adding young playmakers like Mayer, and I think it works out for him. And then at 31, we have our final trade of this draft, the Cincinnati Bengals, who I have predicted to win the Super Bowl. You're welcome, Bengal fans. Trade out of the first round and give it to Arizona, who has lost DeAndre Hopkins, and they're looking to add some speed to their offense. So they bring in Josh Downs, wide receiver out of North Carolina. Pair him with Marquise Brown. Pair him with Rondell Moore, Greg Dorch, whoever you want to have in that room. I think it's going to make a very electric offense. If you like this mock or if you hated it, let us know in the comment section below. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And with that, this is the two-minute drill mock draft.